Welcome back, Hilbert students. Uh, we are learning about the American Revolution. Uh, we learned about the early part of the war, and we ended with uh, American victories at Trenton and Princeton. And I wanted to just start with those two again. I just wanted to uh, go over uh, how important that these two victories are going to be and why. Uh, so it is uh, wintertime. Uh, nothing is really going too well for the American Army. And uh, what's going to happen January 1st is a lot of the soldiers, their enlistment is going to end. The contract that they signed, where maybe it was for six months, maybe it was for a year, but a lot of their enlistments are going to end January 1st. And uh, Washington sees that, you know, morale is low. And what helps uh, an army out when their morale is low? A victory. And so uh, that's what uh, Washington's going to do. Now, normally, uh, the European armies, when it was winter time, uh, they would take the winter off, wait till spring to come back, and then they would resume their fighting. So the English, they're very content, and uh, Washington, he's going to come up with a plan. He's going to uh, attack the Hessian soldiers at Trenton. And the Hessian soldiers are mercenaries. They are professional soldiers. They will fight for anyone who pays them the right amount of money. King George paid them to come over to America and fight the colonists, 30,000 of them. So what Washington does is on December 25th, the night of December 25th, he and his men uh, head out. Uh, it's cold. It's, it's a surprise attack. They have to cross the Delaware River uh, into New Jersey, and they do it quietly. And the uh, funny thing is, is that... Uh, during the Hessian celebration of Christmas, a messenger brings the Hessian commander a note. And the Hessian commander takes and he puts it in his pocket. He never reads it. Uh, the note said that, hey, the Americans are coming. Imagine how history could have been changed, huh? Anyways, the uh, Hessians are caught sleeping. Now, they celebrated Christmas. They were tired. They were sleeping. They were not ready for the Americans. The battle, the battle last less than an hour, the Hessian soldiers, the best trained troops in the world, 22 are killed, 83 are wounded, uh, but between 800 and 900 are captured. 400 end up escaping. Americans, two die. They froze to death, and then five were wounded. Huge victory for the Americans. British are upset. They're going to chase Washington around for a whole week. Famous picture, Washington crossing the Delaware. All right. Take a look at all the ice in the, in the river. You can see how cold it uh, might have been. And then uh, the, the British are going to chase Washington around New Jersey. A week later, the British come to a, a valley. They look down. They see the American tents. They see the American fires. Uh, they say, hey, we'll attack in the morning. That night, Washington leaves the tents up, he leaves the fire is burning, and he and his men quietly leave camp, come around, and attack the British from the rear. Another American victory. So just before Washington's going to lose a bunch of his soldiers, two American victories, morale goes up, more people are starting to join the army, and it was uh, two victories, one because of General George Washington's leadership. All right. So now the British are going to adopt a new strategy. And it's going to be uh, led by a gentleman by the name of General John Burgoyne. They called him Gentleman Johnny. I'll get into that more in a second. But his plan is a three-part plan. It's going to include three armies, one led by St. Leger, one led by Howe, and then uh, another army led by uh, Burgoyne. And uh, let me explain what this is going to be, but uh, it's going to lead to uh, a couple of battles. I'll get into those, but let's take a look at the map. So what you've got is Burgoyne's plan is for all three armies to meet here in Albany. Burgoyne is going to come from Canada. He's going to move south, uh, but he's got like 60 wagons, maybe even more wagons. It's, he's traveling through the wilderness. They called him Gentleman Johnny because, well, 
He liked to have his personal items along with him. 30 of those wagons had personal items of his, clothes and things like that. He liked to drink champagne at supper. He had a couple of wagons filled with champagne. They're traveling through the American wilderness. And so along the way, they have to chop down trees. They have to build bridges. They have to do all that. It's taking them a long time. And the Americans see this. And so they start chopping down trees to land in the roads before uh, the British, slowing them down even more. All right. Uh, let's go to... But let's go to Howe. Howe was supposed to go from New York City. He was supposed to travel to, to Albany. But he said, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to go capture Philadelphia. So he doesn't go north. He goes south to Philadelphia. He takes the city of Philadelphia. And then he stays in Philadelphia for the winter. So Howe never even came to Albany. So that's one army out. St. Leger. He's at the Fort Stanwix. He gets a note. It was a, a fake note that the Americans wanted him to get. It said, hey, Benedict Arnold is leading an army of American soldiers. He's going to come to Fort Stanwix, a large army. St. Leger gets out of there. He, he bolts, leaves all the equipment in Fort Stanwix. So Howe is out. St. Leger is out. And then for Gordon, it's just taking him forever to get where he needs to be. And they run out of supplies. And so he sends soldiers out to look for supplies. He's got 8,000 soldiers. He needs food to feed these guys. So in the city of Bennington, they're going to have, they're going to meet the Americans. It's called the Battle of Bennington. It's a big victory for the Americans. Over 200 British casualties. Uh, a casualty is a soldier who is killed or wounded in battle. So 200 casualties for the British, 700 British soldiers are captured. All right. It's a big victory for them. They go on a little bit further, and the Battle of Saratoga is going to happen. There's actually a series of different battles, but once again, uh, we call the Battle of Saratoga the turning point in the war. And... Uh, over 1,100 British soldiers are killed or wounded. Over 6,000 are captured. This is a huge amount of soldiers. And the Americans use this victory to turn the tide of war. So it's called the turning point of the war, and it's important for three reasons. One, it really boosted American morale. Uh, boy, I mean, we've been, they're fighting the British, the best army in the world, and they're winning. All right? So that's, that's a big thing. Second, it ended the British threat to New England. Because this plan was to take Albany, cut New England off from the rest of the colonies, and, and that didn't happen. So that, that, that's not going to happen. The most important thing about the Battle of Saratoga is afterwards uh, France decides to join the war on our side. France hates England. They, they hated England since the French and Indian War, and England booted France out of North America. Uh, during the early parts of the war, France was helping us, but they weren't doing it publicly. They were doing it on the sly. Uh, they weren't sure if the Americans could win. They wanted to wait to see if the Americans had a chance to win that war, and that's what happens with the Battle of Saratoga. The Americans show that they have a chance to beat the British, and now France is going to come along, and we, I don't think we win the war without France's help. They're going to give us soldiers. They're going to give us money. They're going to give us supplies. They're going to give us a navy. So uh, this Battle of Saratoga, huge in the American Revolutionary War. So now the winter of 1777-78 comes. This is one year after uh, Trenton and Princeton. And this is the low point of the war for Americans. The American army is stationed at uh, Valley Forge. It is in Pennsylvania. Uh, they chose this for defensive purposes, but they're camped out and they are low on food. They are low on housing. They are low on supplies. They are low on uniform. They're low on everything. Morale is terrible. 12 men sleeping to a hut. And when you got 12 men in a hut in wintertime with low on supplies, one guy gets sick, that disease is going to spread. So not a good time for the soldiers. But we're going to talk about a couple of foreigners that came along to help the American cause. 
One was a 19-year-old Frenchman by the name of Marquis de Lafayette, friend of the French king, rich kid, 19 years old. Does he have to come over to the colonies to fight a war? Could he be doing anything he wanted in France? He could. He chose to come over. He's a huge help for the Americans. Even though he's only 19, good military mind, he's going to lead soldiers into different battles during the American Revolution. He is going to come. He's going to use his own money to buy supplies for the soldiers at Valley Forge. He's going to live with the soldiers at Valley Forge, which uh, helps him become uh, endeared to his men. And then the other uh, foreigner that we want to talk about, uh, talk about is a gentleman by the name of Baron von Steuben. He is a Prussian officer. Prussia used to be part of Germany. He is a Prussian officer. If you've ever seen a movie, an army movie, and you got that really mean drill instructor, Baron von Steuben. His job is to take the American troops and train them and turn them into a fighting force. And that's what he does. During that, time, that winter in Valley Forge, he's going to get the men. They're going to drill, 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 and they're going to become better because of it. All right? So uh, Valley Forge, low point, but uh, a couple foreigners, Marquis de Lafayette, Baron von Steuben, he's going to help us out. Just a, a picture of what Valley Forge might have looked at or looked like. All right, now, the war started in New England, Boston. All right, Boston Massacre, Boston Tea Party, Bunker Hill. And then it moved to the middle colonies, the Battle of Long Island, Trenton, Princeton, Saratoga, all of those in the middle colonies. And now the British are going to move the war to the south. And why are they doing that? Well. Loyalists. There were two, there were two groups of uh, colonists. You had patriots, those who were fighting for independence from England, and you had loyalists, those who remained loyal to England. And the South had a lot of loyalists. And the British thought that, hey, you know what? I think these guys are going to be able to help us out. And some loyalists did help fight in the British Army against their fellow colonists. So that's one reason that they're going down there. And uh, as the war is being fought in the South, Britain is winning it. They're doing very well at the beginning. Uh, it's going to take time for the Americans to figure out uh, what to do down there, but they do. And there's going to be a couple of uh, people we want to talk about. Uh, Francis Marion is going to be one of them. His nickname is the Swamp Fox. And then uh, General Nathaniel Green. Let's start with Francis Marion first. He's going to use something called guerrilla warfare. Francis Marion never had more than 70 men under his command. He could not go out in the open and fight the British Army you know, face to face. What he chose to do was to use small hit and run tactics that it doesn't hurt the enemy all at once, but over time these hit and run tactics take their toll. Francis Marion and his men would hide out in the swamps of South Carolina during the day, and then at nighttime come out, attack the British, and then head back into the swamps. British want, didn't want anything to do with the swamps. There's alligators in there. There's poisonous snakes. So this cover worked well for uh, the swamp fox and his men, and they did uh, some good damage uh, to the, the British. And then you had General Nathaniel Green. He is in charge of the uh, American army in the South. Washington can't be everywhere. So Nathaniel Green is in charge of the army in the South. And he knows he can't fight the British, so what does he do? The British are, want to be along the coast of, uh, near the ocean. They can get supplies over there. They can get soldiers. They like being near the coast. Nathaniel Green starts uh, running around the countryside, making the British leave the coast, chasing him around the countryside. As they do that, well, they're getting tired out, and they're getting farther and farther away from their supplies. So. Uh, the British got tired of that. The British General Cornwallis said, forget this, I'm gonna go hang out in Yorktown, Virginia. Now when Washington heard that Cornwallis was going to put his headquarters in Yorktown, he got very excited. Washington is from Virginia and he knew he could defeat the British with Cornwallis at Yorktown. Let me show you how. Remember, we got the French Navy. They're helping us out. So Cornwallis sets up base here in Yorktown. And what happens here is 
the Washington hurries his armies. He's got another foreigner, Rochambeau. He leads his troops and he surrounds the English. Washington brings his army. He's got von Storm, he's got Lafayette. They are surrounding the British army by land. But the British army wasn't concerned because they could get supplies from the sea. No, they can't. The French Navy is going to prevent that. French Navy is going to sink some British ships and they're going to prevent British ships from coming there. And so really this was what is known as a siege. You surround the enemy and you just wait for them to surrender. And it lasted from September 28th to October 19th. And finally, the British had had enough and they surrendered. The war ends. Uh, Yorktown was the last major battle of the war. 8,000 British soldiers surrendered. Uh, Cornwallis wasn't even man enough to uh, surrender to Washington. He sent out someone else to do uh, the, that uh, little deed. Um, but the American casualties uh, throughout the war, 6,200 are going to die in battle. 10,000 died in camp. Remember, a lot of diseases spreading around. And then 8,500 Americans died while they were prisoners of war. All right. So the Americans win. They defeat the British. No one, no one saw this coming. And after each war, both sides get together and they sign what's called a treaty. And they agree to, to certain things under the treaty. Uh, treaty is always named after the city in which it was signed. This was the, the Treaty of Paris. Representatives from Britain and the United States meet there and they agree on three things. One, the U.S. is now an independent nation. It, it is no longer a colony of Britain. It is its own country. It is the United States of America. Two, uh, they agree on the, the borders, and I'll show you that in just a second. The borders of the new country, where, do, where does it end? Where does it start? We'll get into that. And third, the United States agreed to pay loyalists for any property that was taken or destroyed during the war. Loyalists were not treated well during the American Revolution. Taxes were passed against them. Some were placed in jail. Property was taken. Uh, loyalists didn't think that the United States was going to uh, keep up with their promise. So uh, at the end of the war, 80,000 loyalists are going to move to Canada. Uh, Canada still belonged to uh, Britain. And that was a, a large movement at that time. But if you take a look at the map, this is the original 13 colonies. And then this is the land that they gained uh, through the Treaty of Paris, all the way to the Mississippi River. So the Mississippi River was the boundary in the west. Canada was the boundary in the north. Atlantic Ocean was the boundary in the east. And in the south, Spanish Florida was the boundary. This was the new United States. American Revolutionary War is over. Americans did the unthinkable. They won. Uh, now they got to figure out what they're going to do next. Once again, PowerPoint on uh, Google Classroom. The video, Google Classroom. Textbook, Google Classroom. Got any questions for me? Do not hesitate to ask.